So news today out of LSU football, uh, cornerback Seven Banks has decided that he's going to declare for the NFL draft, will not play any more college football. A um, little bit surprising based on where we are in the calendar, quite frankly. You just never got a feel for what Seven Banks had to contribute to LSU. He came to LSU from Ohio State where he had suffered multiple injuries, had missed a lot of time. Would he recover from them and be the same player that he was projected to be when he's a top 50 player in the country coming out of high school? Who knows? He comes to LSU and he's working, and then all of a sudden he gets in that scary collision on the kickoff against Auburn. Obviously never plays again for LSU. Thought, okay, admirable. He wants to come back and give it one more go in college football. But just decided maybe against that. I, I don't have any inside information here. Certainly haven't uh, read anything. It's just pretty new. But maybe this is a situation where Seven Banks says, look, my body's about to give out here. I may have a chance to make this if I give it one healthy go. Let's try. I don't need to subject my body to 12 more months of college football when it may not hold up for that. So I don't know how draftable he is. Certainly, if you look at his measurables and what he was coming out of high school, that projects to the NFL four years and that many injuries after it, hard to tell. Certainly pulling for him, hope it works out, but you feel like his body's just kind of betrayed him at this point. So how does it leave LSU, and where are they as far as cornerback goes? Well, you got Denver Harris, you got Zy Alexander, you got J.K. Johnson. You got Deuce Chestnut. That's your transfer portal class that you brought in. Well, Terrence Welsh is back. You bring in J.V. and Tobiano, who's an early enrollee. Ashton Stamps, who's a an athlete you've brought in. Jeremiah Hughes. And kind of that's what it looks like at this point. I think with Harris, Chestnut, Johnson, that looks pretty solid. And Alexander's going to be a wild card. He might be a guy that comes in and was just in the wrong level of football and fits right in. But I think a lot of people are going to pivot and look at Colby Richardson and say, hey, that's a guy with some measurables who played really well at his level. Did it transfer to an elite level at LSU? It did not. Did he help LSU? Yeah, he was out there and, and gave him the best he could. But... I think you realize there were some better options for LSU last year. We'll see. Maybe Zy Alexander's ready to roll. Maybe he's not. But your numbers still aren't terrible. Harris, Alexander, Johnson, Chestnut, Welsh, Tobiano. That's six guys at the outside corner spot that you feel pretty good about. Where does Greg Brooks fit in? Where does Sage Ryan fit in? Those are all nickel pieces you can you can play with nickel, dime, safety, wherever you want to do it. But as far as outside corners go, that's where it looks like. And I think that's okay. I think Denver Harris has a chance to be a real number one. I think Deuce Chestnut is a proven college football commodity. I think J.K. Johnson has the pedigree to help you for sure. And then you hope that J.B. and Tobiano is the player that most high school recruiting analysts believe him to be. At that point, you're okay. You don't want to take on a couple more injuries because then things get a little dicey. But again, you do have some guys back with Major Burns and Sage Ryan and Greg Brooks. And you've got some guys that I'm not mentioning that outside corner that can help you in the secondary. But if you want to keep everybody where they're supposed to be, that's where you would start. It's been an interesting run at cornerback since... Brian Kelly took over. Because obviously you remember that, that Eli Ricks and Dwight McLaughlin left. So you're left with like nothing. So you go grab all these guys to fill out the first roster of the Brian Car Kelly area, but you know they're all going to leave at this point a year from now, which is now where we are. And they did. Some had to. Some chose to. Jar Bernard Converse, Brakai Gardner. You know the list at this point. So it had to be overhauled once again. At this point, you can expect Denver Harris on the 2024 LSU team. 
you can expect LaTerrence Welsh and Javian Toviano and Ashton Stamps and Jeremiah Hughes to be on the 2024 LSU team. There's a, a little bit more stability in the numbers as opposed to just plug and get out and go plug all the new older guys in. Now, you may lose Deuce Chestnut. J.K. Johnson's got options. So Alexander's old. So we'll see. In, in this day and age, anybody can transfer anywhere to get a waiver or make sure it's your first time. So nothing's guaranteed, and that's what makes this a little bit more difficult to project towards. But I think, like I said, when you look at this this year, this team, this position group, I think LSU is okay on numbers. Seven banks was just going to be difficult to project as a full-time high-level contributor because he just has not been on the field in years. Literally. Just hasn't. And that's just a, a tough break for Seven Banks, who by all accounts is a great kid. And um, I'm thrilled that he was able to bounce back from that neck injury and feels able to, to continue his football career. We'll see what that journey looks like. It's probably going to be a tough one, but he's made that decision that he is going to move on. He is going to test the NFL water. So we wish Seven Banks all the best. And Tigers just uh, a, a couple weeks out from starting S, uh, fall, uh, spring, starting spring football practice. And we'll have you covered wall to wall here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Hey, thanks so much for watching the Hunt Palmer Show on YouTube. If you don't mind, throw us a like right below and hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.